as a freshman, I would argue that Congress overspent before I got here, and Congress is overspending now. Um, could we put up a chart, um, one, number one, please? This, this chart illustrates uh, what was happening uh, before I arrived. It also illustrates that uh, Democrats reinstituted PAYGO, uh, and at the reinstitution of PAYGO, uh, the deficits just got larger and larger and larger and larger going forward. The, the red bars are increasing deficit levels in billions of dollars. So um, as a freshman, as I said, I am just stunned by the logic in this town where people say, because the Republicans overspent while they were in charge, we, the Democrats, get to overspend to two and three times the level that the Republicans overspent when they were in, in charge. And I, I'm dismayed, I am frustrated, I'm disappointed with this year's spending spree. How does the administration intend to enforce fiscal discipline on the discretionary side, particularly after FY 2010? Well, again, we have put forward, uh, even just focusing on fiscal year 2010, a, uh, a, a set of proposals, and thereafter, as you know, uh, a glide path that will get non-defense discretionary spending to the lowest level since 1962. We put forward a set of specific uh, reductions also f as part of the fiscal year 2010 budget to terminate programs. I uh, appreciated that your caucus or members of your caucus put forward your own ideas on specific spending reductions that could uh, be adopted. I'd note that uh, in terms of specific spending reductions, individual programs that you all put forward, uh, you were able to come up with $3 billion a year. That's a good start and we're looking at the suggestions, but uh, there's also just a recognition that this is hard work and we'd wanna work with you to do better than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then I'd like to turn my um, attention for the next question to what is admittedly a small part of that, but it's one that irks the American people, and that's earmarks. Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, the president signed a $410 billion appropriations bill with nearly 9,000 earmarks. And the reason, apparently, that that was signed because, was because that was last year's business. But just last week, the House considered the Commerce, Justice, and Science Appropriations Bill with roughly 1,100 earmarks in that bill alone. So my question is, would this legislation, as it passed the House, be signed into law by the president? Now, this is a president, when he was campaigning, said that he wanted to change earmark policy, that he opposed earmarks, and that this is, was an important hallmark of his campaign. Thus far, I haven't seen a demonstration of the principle he articulated during his campaign. Uh, three things. First, uh, with regard to earmarks that go to for-profit entities, we are glad that the Congress has agreed we are going to make sure that those are competed, so that, that will be beneficial. Second, the administration is now, before a conference report, actually asking the relevant agencies to scrub the, the language and look for earmarks that can be identified much earlier in the process than had been the case before. Third, we have already identified, for example, uh, the, the, the example that comes to mind is pre -disaster, the pre-disaster accounts at FEMA. Uh, we have expressed concern in one of our statements of administration policy about earmarks in, that, in, in those accounts. So you will be seeing us expressing concerns where we can quickly identify uh, inappropriate earmarks, and I'd look forward to working with you to reduce them as much as possible. And, and will the president veto bills that have earmarks that don't meet your standards? Uh, the president will veto bills that don't meet his standards, yes. Now, exactly what the standards are, we, would, we need to work with you. And again, that was what I was just describing, a process for trying to get earmarks down as much as possible and also identify them uh, as quickly as possible so that we all know what we're talking about. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, just one more comment. I do, not, I do not see how we can add trillions in deficits and debt over five years and still be PAYGO compliant. But my time is up and I yield back. Mrs. Schwartz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for this hearing. And uh, Dr. Orzak, uh, good to be with 